It has been absolutely extraordinary. Thousands of pro-democracy protesters are engaging in what's being called the Umbrella Revolution. In the streets, a sea of umbrellas, the symbol of a mass demonstration underway in Hong Kong. Hundreds of thousands packed the streets of downtown Hong Kong as police fired as many as 87 cans of tear gas, determined demonstrators shielding themselves with umbrellas and spawning the so-called Umbrella Revolution. Hong Kong's embattled leader says she will spare no effort to stop anti-government protests. Over the past six months, more than 6,000 protesters have been arrested. Authorities threaten a stronger crackdown. The chief executive of Hong Kong declaring the demonstrators the enemy of the people. If we just surrender, we will lose the rule of law, we will lose the freedom, we will lose everything. You can't understand Jimmy Lai without understanding Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a place that has no natural resources, where the people have had to import virtually everything, including water. In the middle of the 20th century, it was extremely poor on par with West African countries. And it became successful precisely because it implemented a system based on the rule of law, on free trade, on voluntary exchange, on a full respect for personal and civil liberties. In a word, freedom. 40 years ago, Hong Kong was Milton Friedman's shining example of what freedom could do for a society. This is Lo Wu, the official border crossing point between China and Hong Kong. On this side of the border, people are free not only in the marketplace, but in all their lives. They are free to say what they want, to write what they want, to do pretty much as they please. Not so over there. As a child, Jimmy Lai escaped China to come to Hong Kong. Jimmy Lai was a stowaway from China at age 12. He arrived in this colonial city with nothing. Over the next decade, he would go from factory worker to factory owner and ultimately start his own clothing label, Giordano. Giordano had vast retail presence. It was the first fast fashion chain in the world, and it grew in a matter of 10 years to become the most recognizable brand name in Asia. As Jimmy grew his business, he also became a voracious reader of nonfiction and political philosophy. I was invited to a retire Jewish lawyer's house for dinner. He took a book from the bookshelf and gave it to me and said that, you know, read this, it's good for you. And the book's name is called The Road to Serve Them. The book changed my life. And that book really helps to bring it together for him, what freedom is and how it can be lost and how it can be preserved in a society that is maybe the freest in the world right then. That freedom would be threatened when the 99-year lease the British had negotiated from China expired. When Hong Kong reverted to China in 1997, the government of China promised 50 years of no interference in the way Hong Kong ran its domestic affairs. And for some period of time, that was mostly true. By this time, Jimmy Lai was already on the radar of the Chinese government as an outspoken supporter of the student protests at Tiananmen Square. I didn't feel anything about China until Tiananmen Square happened. I wanted to get involved. As the world watches and listens in horror, the peaceful pro-democracy demonstration in China comes to a violent and bloody end. And that was when he realized that he should use his gift as an entrepreneur to support freedom and democracy. So he started Apple Daily, a newspaper company in 1995. That was two years before the handover. At that point of time, Jimmy thought a newspaper speaking on behalf of the Hong Kong people would have huge potential. And he wrote in his column something about this Communist Party. And of course, Beijing was not happy about it and then told Jimmy, you cannot continue to do that. Otherwise, we'll close down your fashion business 
And Jimmy said, you know what, I'm selling it. Do it whatever you want. I am going to continue my media business. And that is where I'm going to put all my effort. The confrontation with the Chinese regime would only intensify under Xi Jinping's increasingly authoritarian rule and his move to crack down on freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, and the democracy movement. We have not seen any sign of violence on the part of the demonstrators, but you can see how swiftly the riot police move in. And what we can see very clearly here is that even peaceful political protest is simply not tolerated by the authorities in Hong Kong. We are now here to fight for our freedom and most importantly to fight for our future. In July 2020, the regime in China imposed a severe national security law that, among other things, criminalized speaking out against the regime in Beijing. I remember the day that I text Jimmy, told him, sorry, Jimmy, um, I don't think it is safe to be here in Hong Kong and continue to write, so I have to leave. And Jimmy told me, yes, you should leave. It is not safe anymore. And then I asked him, how about you? And Jimmy said, no, I'm not leaving. I do not want to send the wrong message to the people of Hong Kong and to Beijing that we are giving up. We are not. If they make me a symbol of resistance, whatever suffering I suffer under them will be a wonderful message for the world to pay focus here. Authoritarian governments crack down on the most visible opponents first because they want people to see if we can get Jimmy Lai, we can get you. And if they couldn't shut him up by threatening him, then they had to do it by arresting him. Billionaire and media mogul Jimmy Lai handcuffed and escorted through his newspaper offices. The Apple Daily newspaper was shut down and Jimmy Lai was charged. The day he was arrested, his wife uh, sent me a note and she said they put handcuffs and chains on him to humiliate him. And I told her, I said, don't worry about that. The Chinese may have intended that the handcuffs and chains be to humiliate him. But the people of Hong Kong see them as a badge of honor. Today, seven of Hong Kong's most prominent pro-democracy leaders were convicted of unlawful assembly. In honoring Jimmy with the Friedman Prize, we're really conferring it on all the people who are in this struggle. We think of the man in front of the tank. Milton Friedman himself said that that man would be a fitting recipient of the Friedman Prize. And so when we give this award to Jimmy, I think we're also giving it to the people in the crowds in Hong Kong, all those people under the umbrellas, the people in China last year behind the blank pages, the man standing in front of the tank. They're all so important. There are thousands of political prisoners in Hong Kong, and Jimmy Lai represents those individuals, those individuals who are willing to risk everything. When was the last time you heard of a billionaire dissident? That's Jimmy Lai. His deep commitment and understanding of freedom gives him a sort of inner freedom and there's nothing more powerful than that. I have long determined not to be frightened by fear. Don't think about the consequences. I just do what's right and go on my life.